Good day YouTubers, Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia here. Today's video covers a little visit we had from my mate Dang R. Stu. Uh, we go out to the workshop, have a look at our electric car project that we're working on and also have a bit of a look at the uh, electric quad bike conversion that John's been working on. So this is the one we got that had a bit of an apple crate on the back of it. Oh, okay. It was quite a unique looking thing. Welding bits. And yeah, yeah, they've added bits and pieces. It looked really cute. Oh, with the great, uh, yeah. Wood slats. Nice. Anyway. So what was the, what's the firewall like from that one? Is it better than that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's even Stevens, but... Um, right. This is probably a little worse, the firewall on here. There's just, yeah. They bought a replacement firewall from Adelaide. I don't think it was much either. It was a couple of bucks and it's in mint condition. It's really good. Yeah, the other it's firewall. the best bit about his car. Yeah. But he's a Series 1 too. A series 1 also. So mm -hmm. this is a Series 2A. Right. Um, yeah, I, th I think we'll just repair the other firewall. It'll mm -hmm. be a bit of a Frankenstein of both these cars. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, building one good one from two is yeah. an awesome way to go. Yeah. So, and, you know, we're, we're, I'm aware of the cost of it, so, you know, this car was free, that one was 200 bucks, so we're into the, a complete car for 200, 200 bucks, so yeah, it's, it's bad, yeah, it? and that, in the, at the end of the day, that's kind of, you kind of got to have two cars to get one good one when they're this, yeah, this, this old crusty, and, and do, you, do you like the battery? Hmm, that's quality. Steve noticed that the uh, positive to the starter motor is black and the earth lead was red <laughs> and there was a strap here as well that I don't know what they did with and I've, yeah, right. we've got theories they turned it on put it on the wrong backwards. way around and then once you get the engine going the old generator would be pushing the electricity backwards it would just yeah. have hell yeah, interesting if it did work at all there's a lot of space there you know the electric motor takes mm. up nothing so ba you, this becomes your battery compartment and then You've got two battery compartments here and where the fuel tank was over there. So the engine, could, the, the, the motor, the actual motor could just go where the gearbox is now or something? Or? Uh, well, we'll be putting it on, on the front of the bell housing. So, so just use the existing gearbox? Yeah, use the existing gearbox. Not this one, but uh, the one out of the other vehicle is apparently yeah. okay. So How do they go the electric motors with this gear ratio? Well, it's sort of set and forget. So you put it in fourth gear. You don't need the gearbox, right. technically. You just need so, thing. so you could save a lot yeah. of weight by just having a fixed gear ratio. And well, you could go straight onto the transfer case because you don't need your clutch. You don't need. Yeah, um, but we're probably going to put it all back in just so you've got that. Uh, if you want the torque, you, you want know, want variable torque. torque. Going up yeah, still, yeah, and you've yeah. been upstairs driving. Uh, yeah. Are you going to reverse use reverse for the gearbox or reverse the current? Uh, well, uh, well, there's an argument yeah. for doing both. Yeah. Um, you, you double the number of gears. So you just do a reverse polarity switch on your electric motor. Yeah. And then you've got reverse. With multiple gear multiple ratios. Gears. So, yeah. a so you've got five reverse, reverse gears and five four gear four. 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 Yeah. 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 Plus high low range. Yep. As well. So yep. you're, you're actually expanding the range of what it can do. Yep. Um, this this box this is a PTO outlet. Mm -hmm. So we'll steal that and bolt that on the gearbox so we've got a PTO option off mm -hmm. the electric motor yep. but we'll also have the 240 have the inverter, yeah. yeah. so it kind of just quirky stuff that you can do mm. you know like there's there's options like imagine we can run a cement mixer or yeah. you know, yeah. whatever PTO a saw or your uh, sand sifter yeah <laughs> can be uh be too late <laughs> grass slasher yeah Warford. yeah through yep. the paddocks. Yeah. This will be your tractor. Yeah. So it's kind of that. I don't know. We'll play with that and come up as we get closer. We'll work out you know, what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. as as PTO and 240 volt attachments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess that just gives you all this variability if you. Mm. If you stick Makes out. sense. Yeah. Shit you can do. So yep. I think if it was just an absolute bare bones vehicle just to get to town and back, mm -hmm. then I'd probably just go straight to the transfer case yeah. with the electric motor, not worry about the gearbox, not worry about the clutch. Yeah, yeah. It's a just turn it off buggy, you know? Yeah. But, um, but, yeah. It'd even be an argument to put the motor in there and direct drive, depending on the speed of the motor versus the mm. ratio of the diff. Mm. 
then you don't even need the transfer case, and you only go rear wheel drive or front wheel drive. Because yeah. The top's way yeah. Thin. Yeah. But yeah, there's more thinking to do with that. Yeah. I'd still want it to be four wheel drive. That's capable. Get around the block That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, otherwise I think it's that thing of like you haven't really converted it. It's not a you have, you've you've lost functionality yeah. rather than saying no no it's just electric same functionality but just electric not petrol. Well, you know that's the whole principle. It's kind of gonna. I want it to be a mobile battery wall. Mm -hmm. you know, I yeah, want it to be able to utilize it as a battery wall for the house, yeah. so I can plug the house into it if I if I choose to. And would you actually just buy like a power wall, or would you get your own lithium batteries? Well. It, Something like a Tesla wall's a lot of money, mm -hmm. and it's only 13, 13 and a half thousand kilowatts, somewhere in that. We're probably going to need about 25,000. Okay. 25 kilowatts, right? Yeah. So, we, we need so this will be bigger. More. This will be bigger. Yeah, right. It'll be like two Tesla walls. Two of them combined, yeah. Which is good for the house capacity, given that we're currently using about three and a half to five kilowatts a day. Mm -hmm. The house would run off this for a couple of days, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got, you know, our, our solar rig on the roof of the house produces about five kilowatts an hour. You know, on a, on a day like today, we're doing five kilowatts every hour mm. the whole day. Seriously. Even on a shady day, we're still, because it's a six and a half kilowatts of the panel, yep. it's always running at five kilowatts out. Yeah, right. So it's very, um, you know, we're just churning power out that we're not really using. So yep. if we can store it in here, then Yep. Use it for multiple functions, so as a battery wall, as a car, as a yeah, you know, with the PTO. Makes sense, the yeah. Plug in 240, it's an infinitely adaptable kind of usable thing. It's not just transport or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's not just a glorified golf buggy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd be happy with glorified golf buggy. You know. Don't knock it. Yeah. If that's all you get, then that's all right too. Yeah, I'd be happy. Glorified. Yep. This is apparently a thing, this uh, little bar. Yeah, you it's, hit it at the, the, the draw bar. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, agricultural draw bar. Yeah, yeah. And this is designed for attachment of um, PTO, uh, you know, like three three point linkages and yes. shit for yeah. farm implements. So yep. slashes and yep. harvesters and whatever. Yep. I don't know. I could put a tray on it, a lightweight alloy tray or something, you know. To, but that's, well, that's what Pebbly's got, yeah, the alloy tray. Yeah. Well, I think he's actually getting rid of his and just going to timber. Yeah. Sort of flatbed. I kind of like to keep it still looking like a, a vintage Rover, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the aesthetic is there. Yep. And, it's um, electric under the hood. Yeah, it's just electric under the hood. So you're still essentially driving, getting the vintage car kind of experience mm -hmm. but and look of it. It'll be interesting because, you know, I think in five, five to ten years, it'll be something that most vintage car owners have to contemplate mm. you know and I think that's when it'll yeah. people will start to look at that's it a bit differently get it all done first and get the bids up and everything and yeah. get to the market early before I start panicking well, there's already a bit of a groundswell you know like as I start, start to get this out there as a project mm -hmm. there's lots of people going oh I'm really interested in that I'm, I've been thinking about doing that yeah. and you know we'll see how you go with yours and then What do you think, Stu? I don't want one. Under, underpowered for the machine. It claims to be 1800 watts, but it doesn't actually put out 1800 watts. And it's 12 volt? 48 volt. 48. Oh, 6 so volt batteries. They're 12 oh. volt batteries, four of them. All in um, series. There's a controller in here. So you buy the motor and the controller for $220 off nice. eBay yeah, in yeah. China. So it's easy, cheap. If you want to do a small runabout for kids, yeah. beautiful machine. Yeah. Uh, for what I want, underpowered. So we've got yeah. the next motor in there with the controller. Yep. Um, and it's five kilowatts. Yep. Okay. It's a big step up. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's it's bigger, heavier also motor. Also, forty-eight volts, or is it? Yep, forty-eight yeah. volt input. Yep. Two, so two thousand two hundred dollars for that one instead wow. of two hundred and twenty dollars. Um, it might have been a little expensive. I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's it's right. hard to say with electric motors, yeah. but anyway. So just working out how to chain drive the new motor and put it yeah. in there, which is yeah. not that bad. The difficulty with this quad bike is it's shaft drive, yep. um, whereas a lot of other ones are already chain drive straight to, to the back. To start with, yeah. Which makes mounting a motor in them easier. Yeah. Anyway, but 48 volts, going to put a computer UPS on the front. Yep. So that provides a 48 volt battery charger. Yep. And also provides 240 volt mains out. 
Oh, so this right, becomes yes. a oh, mobile Steve was workbench. mentioning that, exactly, yep. Take your power tools with you, have yep. an inverter in there. and Tow ball on the back, trailer. Yep. So it needs more grunt to be able to pull all the stuff. Pull anything, yeah. Timberwolf, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's for the connector for the... And yes. a plug for the... Yeah, right. Interesting, like, so 10 times the cost for the high capacity engine motor. Yeah. So you, you can hunt around and get prices that might be a bit better. That was yeah. fairly cheap from China. Yep. Um, and includes the control, which is important. So is that off like Alibaba or something like that? Yep. Or AliExpress, yeah. Goldenmotors.com. I saw one you could buy and it was actually just an entire, so it came as a controller and a transaxle, so it would actually, you could actually just replace the whole rear drive train with yep. this unit. And they weren't that expensive, I can't remember how many watts they were, but they were surprisingly affordable. They were used in people movers, so I imagine they were like high torque, low speed sort of application. Yeah, put them on a golf course and carry yeah. a few people around, or yeah. Disneyland to move Yeah, yeah, people, exactly. But it's interesting just going, that's all it was, just a... Just an axle with a motor bolted on and a yep. controller. Yep, and a controller. And it was said to actually, it was said something about it being programmable for high torque, low speed, or high speed, low torque applications, yeah. you could actually configure it. The current motor I've got over there, the new one for this, mm -hmm. has a USB input and yeah. you can program, program it. program it, exactly. It's amazing, isn't it? So. See, it's kind of interesting. It talks about it being a 48 volt DC motor, but it's actually three phase. Right. It's a 48 volt DC controller, yep. and it produces three phase, and just modern electronics. Yep, yep. So, it does all the wonders. Interesting. You build a lightweight version, that's it, take a bit of weight off it. To go on, on the boat. Yeah, your beach take it with you. Beach thing, take yeah. it with you. I would actually like to do an electric conversion on a scooter, like a Vespa or something. Yeah. I think that'd be a nice electric conversion. I yeah. think that's pretty straightforward. Like, this isn't a Quite a few people have used the five kilowatt motor as a um, conversion for a boat motor. Oh yeah, yeah, electric outboard sort of yep. thing. Yep. That would be quite good actually, because I've just bought myself a little uh, inflatable as a tender to the trawler I'm doing. and. Uh, it's got a six horsepower petrol motor on at the moment, but that'd be the perfect boat to drive off a battery with her. And then also because it's like a, a tender for a mothership, you could uh, just charge it on board. Yep. Bring it on board the trawler, plug it in with an Anderson plug, charge it up. Otherwise the big issue for us is there's, you'd be totally dependent on a solar cell, and so it could be slow charging. And there's nowhere to really mount a solar cell on an inflatable like that, unless you do a big canopy or something. Yeah. You're going to do a canopy on the boat though, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, the canopy, the whole back deck awning is going to be solar cells on the trawler. Yeah. I like that idea. It's like, why have an awning and then add solar cells? Why not make the solar cells your the awning? The awning. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to stick a flex between them all and maybe even put a little gutter on them, you know, just catch some water off them. We'll see. I, I noticed on your mate's boat, he was doing the gutters and stuff for water collection. Yes. Boat. Yeah. That's a smart thing to do. Oh, totally. Just yeah. Why would you waste it? And the other thing is the poles that support the awning, they can actually be stainless pipes. Down so pipe. it comes down the inside of the uprights, yeah, so you don't even see it. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's always a crucial thing, you know, getting water, especially if you're going to do long passages. Trips. Yeah. What's your capacity at the moment? Water? Yeah. Zero. Zero. There's no water tanks on the boat at all. What about beer? Beer, I hate beer. <laughs> no, there's actually no water tank at all. It's just beer tank. Just beer tanks. Just beer kegs. So you could swap a lot of this for aluminium framing too, couldn't you? Like get the weight down if you wanted. Could throw away a lot of it, but it was just cheap, cheerful, and fast. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same Got it up and running. Right. Time, time, yeah. So you put the sprocket on the end of the drive shaft. Yeah, and the piece of wood. You might notice. That yeah, I did. <laughs> there's, there's actually ball bearings in the wood shaft. So it's your bearing carrier? Yeah. Yeah. It was like cheap and cheerful. It's like, how yeah. am I going to fill that void? It's like yeah. a piece of hardwood. Would, yeah. Nice. So. Yeah. So I guess when we come to doing the car, it's, we're just going to, you know, it'll be... A bit, bit beefier, here, perhaps. A bit beefier, but... Yeah. What kind of wood are you going to use for the car? <laughs> <laughs> so you just lay that yourself here, or...? No, one of the guys is um, <coughs> a member of a local woodworking group. I yeah, said, here's turn it up. Here's wood. the dimensions. Yeah, yeah. nice. That's and that gave cool. him a good challenge. He loved doing that. So. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, the basic principle is it's kind of a simple conversion. You know, and if you're going to do a scooter, it's not a complex thing. It's really finding enough space to get all your batteries. Yeah. Inside. Well, and then you can also go lithium, I guess, if it was a scooter and you didn't have a lot of space. Mm -hmm. And then, then your power to weight ratio, obviously, is, is good with lithium too. Yeah. 
See, well, boats, it doesn't matter. Your weight's just not an issue for the boat. It's a 10 ton boat anyway. So you can throw half a dozen lead acid batteries in it and it's just no problem. But something like this, it's interesting. I'm going to the boat show on the weekend and uh, I went to the one in Brisbane. And uh, yeah, the amount of people flogging lithium batteries for boats now, it's amazing. But I mean, they're great, but I just, I don't see the advantage on those. I really don't. But in something like this, it'd be incredible. Well, when you have to add lead ballast. Exactly. You add ballast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you add ballast and then put expensive light batteries in. And sure enough, lead ballast batteries, you're not supposed to drain them too low, but you can just put more in. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah, exactly. And you do get better, you know, the deep cycle batteries are not too bad. I can't remember how low you can get them. It's like 50% or something, I think. Just uh, Yeah. <laughs> that's the five kilowatt motor. Um, it's got some beefy looking cables going into it. Comes with a controller as well, which is also beefy. That's like yeah, a big heat sink, isn't it? Aluminium. And just like a huge bunch of pluggy bits to drive your nuts. Mm. My so. nuts drive themselves. <laughs> uh, and I have, to, I have to take that shaft, which is 22 mil, and do something that kind of works with the chain drive I've currently got. So the plan is. I'm going to monster up that, weld yeah. the tube to there, it'll have enough space to run the chain, I'll put in a 5mm, um, what do you call those keys? Woodruff key? Woodruff key, well, yeah. That kind of thing, yeah. And that'll hopefully Well, I think technically a woodruff key has to be a half moon shape or something anyway, it's a oh, yeah, key. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. People get very pedantic about those things. I so, and I'm not sure that's going to take the torque. No, I hope it does. It's a lot of steel. That much. I'd really like to get this guy on there. Yeah, right. Because that'll give me the right sort of gearing. But I don't know. That might be even wussier. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that's it for today, folks. It was only a short visit, so we didn't get to uh, to play very much. Hopefully, Stu will come back a little bit later in the project as uh, as we get the car nearer to driving, so he can have a bit of a go of it then. See ya.